Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to Your Perfect Body, the podcast of the esoteric teaching community. Today's selection is an essay entitled The Path of Spiritual Freedom. The material universe is populated by humanoids, or beings who resemble humans but who have degraded consciousness, unaware of spiritual reality. Their consciousness is concentrated only on the material dimensions of length, width, and height. They may have some foggy awareness of time, but no scientific knowledge of it. When they leave their bodies in dreams or at death, they travel up the way of the esoteric teaching to the gate of association. But because they do not have the key of desire, they cannot enter. They must come back again to birth, struggle, suffering, and death in the material world until they get it. Outside the path of the esoteric teaching, there is only materialistic ignorance and suffering. If a humanoid is very fortunate, he encounters the esoteric teaching through a book, another medium, or a personal invitation. The only qualification required to enter the gate of the exoteric circle is a sincere desire to know the absolute truth. Therefore, we say that the gate of association is opened with the key of desire. Anyone can read the publications or attend the meetings and seminars of the exoteric circle. This training by association will gradually inject scientific knowledge of consciousness and the three dimensions of time into the consciousness of the humanoid, who then has a chance to become a candidate for spiritual initiation, or a human being in the full sense of the term. If a candidate displays good progress in advancing spiritual knowledge and service, avoids the numerous pitfalls on the spiritual path, and attains the key of wisdom, he may be invited by the Master to accept initiation. Initiation, like marriage, is a lifetime commitment. But unlike marriage, there is no divorce court available. Therefore, one who is considering initiation must be very careful to ascertain that he is serious before accepting it. And the Master thoroughly tests all candidates before they may become initiates. An initiate becomes a full-time student of the Master and joins the community of the esoteric school. He is exposed to the complete absolute truth and learns about the three dimensions of eternity through the confidential scriptures of the esoteric teaching. He is also expected to develop a specialty in the transcendental technology of the teaching and to perform original research. He gets personal, individualized instruction from the master teacher and has access to highly confidential sources of spiritual information. Initiation is best for younger people who are still flexible and can adapt to the demanding lifestyle of an esoteric disciple. Older people who are set in their ways are often better off remaining in the exoteric circle and developing their spiritual knowledge in that environment where they will be more comfortable. After all, discipleship is a very difficult and demanding path. However, if one is determined to become a master teacher, it is the only way. It is not unusual for a student to remain a candidate for ten years or more. Similarly, it is not unusual for one to remain an initiate for 25 years or more before becoming a master teacher. Many initiates have to take a birth again before becoming a master. It is far better to err on the side of caution than to prematurely take on the responsibility for others' spiritual advancement. Therefore, it is best if one waits until there is no other alternative before accepting the duties of a master teacher.
However, the overall aim of the entire organization of any school of the esoteric teaching is precisely to create such masters of spiritual wisdom. And there are ways to accelerate the process. Only the master teacher can know the entire technology of the esoteric teaching, for it is his duty to guide the students to their ultimate destinations. What does this mean? By using the mystic keys of the esoteric teaching, one can transfer his consciousness to any planet or dimension, either temporarily or permanently. In this way, one can explore the different dimensions of the material and spiritual universes. Finally, once a master has determined his preference, at the time of death, he can transfer his primary embodiment through the gates of the esoteric teaching to an eternal existence on the spiritual planet or dimension of his choice. This is the end of all suffering, and it is the ultimate aim of the spiritual technology of the esoteric teaching, as well as all spiritual paths based on it, such as yoga and tantra. So now that we have completed a discussion of the general architecture of the teaching, the three circles and so on, the three gates, uh, we can talk more about the ultimate purpose of the teaching, uh, just like mm, if we discuss the general architecture of an airplane, for example, then we can talk more in detail about the different functions of those parts. Uh, the first process of the esoteric teaching in the exoteric circle is simply to cleanse the mud of material consciousness from our hearts and minds. Then, when one becomes an initiate, he begins the process of actual spiritual growth. And this is done by absorbing the ontological teachings of the esoteric teaching of the Vedas until they become one's heart and soul. Finally, by an intensive process of meditation on the holy name, one crosses the gate of realization and attains full self-realization and one then becomes a master teacher. And this is done uh, by total immersion in the medium of transcendental sound vibration. Theoretically, one could do this at any time. However, practically, we find it is only effective after a long and uh, arduous period of study and discipleship. So, uh, we would like to just manufacture a little pill that everyone could take and immediately become fully self-realized. However, that's not possible. Uh, if it were, believe me, uh, we would be the first to do it. Uh, actually, the real spiritual path is quite long and arduous, and there are many pitfalls. So many of our God brothers have made uh, tremendous mistakes and fallen down, gotten themselves in serious spiritual trouble. So we're here to advise you from the very beginning to take the right path. And uh, first of all, one must become linked with the original sources of spiritual knowledge, the Vedas, through the proper medium of the four authorized disciplic succession from the Vedas. Now, as I said, only one of those four is actually active in the English language in the Western countries. So you're pretty much going to have to take shelter of the Brahma Sampradaya, or as it's sometimes known, the Madhva Sampradaya, uh, the Gaudiya Sampradaya. Uh, this is the only real authorized Vedic lineage that's operating in the West in the English language. And then you're going to have to find a master teacher. Well, the good news is there are hundreds of people who are teaching uh, from this particular lineage. Uh, the problem is that not all of them are fully self-realized. And unfortunately, it's going to be up to you to choose uh, which one you want to study with. And you have to make the right choice, or you're going to be limited by the level of advancement that your teacher has attained. So uh, one really should only take initiation 
from someone who is fully self-realized. Ah, if only the world was that simple. Well, it was that simple. When I first became a disciple, there was only one spiritual master of the esoteric teaching in the West, my spiritual master. And luckily, he was a fully self-realized soul of the highest order. So we were 